Welcome to the Harbor Online. My name is Brian, and tonight my hair looks like I am the bully in a 90s after school special. I don't know, it's, it's like week whatever of quarantine, so this is what I got for you. We're gonna dive into a new series in just one moment, but I wanted to remind you that if you were watching on Thursday night, uh, go ahead and tune into We Are The Harbor on Instagram immediately afterwards. We're gonna be going live there. Tara has been uh, having some amazing conversations on there and it's been a great time of community. So check that out immediately after the harbor. But tonight we are gonna start a new series. It'll be a three week series, I think, called Remember Who You Are. Remember Who You Are. And really this series is gonna be focused on this question, and I wanna ask you this question to begin, and it's this. What do you think about when you think about you? What do you think about when you think about you? And as we start this, I just wanna kinda share two preliminary thoughts that I think are gonna be really important for us. The first thought is this. It's up on the screen if you wanna check it out. What we believe about ourselves, what you and I think about ourselves and believe about ourselves is more important than what anyone else thinks about us. And, and let, me, let me explain what I mean by that. It says in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And so what that verse is saying is that the most important thing that you and I can do is that we have this responsibility for our hearts and our minds to make sure that the things that are in it are true and right. Because our, the way that we view ourselves, the way that we view the world, the way that we view our lives is shaped very much by our perspective. And so if you and I, like if we have this perspective, and maybe some of us do, that we're unlovable, or that we're never going to accomplish anything great, or that we can't be useful in the kingdom, if we have that perspective, it's gonna shape our lives. So that's the first thing, that what we believe about ourselves is absolutely important. The second thing that I want us to understand as we start this series is this. We either receive our identity from other voices in our lives, or we receive our identity from Jesus. And so I want you to think about your experience, whether it's 25 years, 30 years, 20 years, 18 years, whatever it is, and, and probably you had some experiences, actually I know you did, you had experiences that happened to you over the course of time, and you allowed your perspective or someone else to kind of speak into that experience and that creates and shapes a lot of the way that you view the world. And that can be either a really good thing or it could be a really bad thing. If you had an experience where you look back and something negative happened and then maybe someone spoke something negative to you, all those things factor together into your mind to start you thinking and processing and viewing the world a different way. As I was thinking about this, I thought about, um, you know, the first movie that I ever saw in theaters was The Lion King. The Lion King, and I'm gonna spoil it. I hope that everyone's seen it. Uh, if, if you haven't, I'm sorry, because you're gonna find out some stuff about it. Uh, anyway, spoiler alert for The Lion King coming up here. But my guy Simba is the prince of the entire, like, Sahara savanna. And, and this terrible thing happens where his father, Mufasa, he dies in a, a horrific wildebeest accident. And so this moment happens to him. And, and then when this moment happens, like a voice, Scar, actually speaks and says, this thing was your fault and everyone's gonna blame you. And so all of a sudden, Simba, who was a prince, he viewed and took on this thing about himself and it caused him to literally go and kind of like live as a vagabond with uh, Timon and Pumbaa and they hung out and sang Hakuna Matata and it was all this amazing time. But he literally walked away from his calling and his identity literally because of a voice that someone spoke over him. And it took another voice, Nala, and she had to speak to him and remind him who he was, and then finally he heard from his own father who he was. 
you didn't know that like Lion King, I'm preaching about Lion King right now. I probably should get to the Bible pretty soon here. But my point with all of this is that it is very possible for us to have experiences in our lives that literally like shape us and and cause us to view the world in a certain way. But I believe what God wants to do for our community is that over the next few weeks that we would experience freedom as we actually see the world, not through our experiences lens or through another voice's lens, but as we see the world through what God's views about us. And there is great freedom in that. And we're gonna be looking tonight and over the next couple of weeks at a passage in Ephesians, just one single passage in Ephesians 1. Tonight we're gonna look at one verse. And in that verse, the Apostle Paul, and in that passage, the Apostle Paul is speaking to a church and the most important thing that he wants to focus their eyes and their attention on is this is who God is and this is what he has done for you. And so in Ephesians 1, verse three, it says this on the screen. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And I want us to focus on that phrase, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. What does that mean? Well, we need to realize and think about this, that most of the things that are, happen to us, at least in our world, in our culture, in our perspective, they, they happen to us because we have to achieve something. So you and I, we have to achieve a certain grade to graduate from high school. We have to achieve college admissions. We have to achieve graduating high college and finding a a good job and achieving to work our way up in that job. And so we live in a society that is very much based on what have you done for me? And so sometimes maybe there's even people that I'm speaking to right now and you have decided and you've spoken over yourself or you've believed the lie that you are invaluable and you are not valuable because you haven't lived up to the exact timeline and the exact uh, like organization that someone else has spoken that you should live over and you haven't achieved things at the exact right time that you think you should have achieved them and so you believe, man, I'm not worthy. But what we have to realize is that when Paul says that we have received every spiritual blessing in Christ, what he is saying is that when we became Christians, our identity was received, not achieved. And that in Jesus, we receive every blessing before we ever achieve anything. And so we're gonna discover over the next few weeks what are some of the blessings that God has given us that we have actually received just simply by the fact that we are part of the family of God. We've achieved every spiritual blessing. But the first thing that we have to realize about these spiritual blessings is that we, sorry, I said we've achieved, but we've received every spiritual blessing. And the first thing that we have to realize is that we don't achieve these or even receive these on our own, but we do it because we are in Christ. If you guys can put that verse back up on the screen for me really quick, it says that in Christ, we have received every spiritual blessing, that he has blessed us in Christ. And I wanna talk about that word in Christ for a second. I want us to understand what it means to be in Christ. Because we don't have these things apart from him. And I wanna read a definition that John Stott, a great pastor, he said this. He said that to be in Christ means to be organically united to Christ. As a limb is in the body or a branch is in the tree to be organically united to Christ. Did you know that in the New Testament, one of the most common ways that it is used to describe Christians is the term in Christ. It's used dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And so you and I, we are followers of Jesus, that's what we do, but who we are is we are in Christ. And Jesus said it this way, he said, abide in me 
and I will abide in you. In other words, like a branch cannot be separated from a tree and still have life. In that same way, you and I, we cannot be separated from Jesus and still experience life. Our spiritual life, our spiritual blessing only happens as we are united with Christ. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about what that means in just a moment, but I wanna take a moment and let us just pause and reflect on this idea of being united in Christ. We're gonna sing one worship song. And during that time, I wanna encourage you to just thank God, even though maybe we don't fully understand it, to thank God that we have been given every spiritual blessing. Before we ever achieved anything, when we came to Jesus, we received every spiritual blessing because we are united with Jesus. Let's sing.
So we're going to continue our teaching as we continue in this series, Remember Who You Are. And by the way, super thankful to have Shane joining us for worship. Man, I'm, I'm grateful for the worship we've been having and so excited to be uh, back worshiping with you in person very soon, I sincerely hope. Um, this, this past Friday night, um, myself and a couple of uh, other uh, people on our staff uh, sat on a, a two-hour uh, Zoom call uh, with some people in our Harbor community who uh, were black uh, and who were from Latin America. And it was such an incredible time to just listen. And, and personally, during this time, as our country is having this conversation you know, about race, I'm really just trying to listen and learn. And I, I, I deeply pray that our church and the church of Jesus Christ can speak out against these horrible things that we see happening uh, in the form of, of racism, in the form of, of prejudice. And honestly, as, as I've been listening and as I've been praying, one of the things that has, has stirred up in my heart so much, and I even said it last week, is that uh, for, for the members of, of our Harbor community who are black and who are people of color and who maybe have experienced those uh, forms of hate against them, man, I, I think that this message of identity in Christ is so vital because we must understand that Jesus literally, like literally has so much more value for you than any other person could ever speak. And, 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 and the greatest news that the church can share is that every single human being is deeply loved by God. And for us who are made in the image of God, every one of us who are Christians, man, even we have a, a high, high place of honor in the kingdom of God. And it is from that place of high honor that the church carries its conviction to speak out and fight against injustice. Because we know that there is a God in heaven who loves every single human being so much. And as his ambassadors, as his kingdom of priests, we walk out into the world carrying that high honor for every person. And so it's so important, even with this conversation, that we look at identity in Christ, but it's also so important, whether you are white or black or any other color, it's so important because in these days, I think us being in quarantine and us being online, all of us are hearing the, the, the voices that we've been hearing have even been amplified because we're on our phones constantly and we're trying to get information and we're trying to get entertainment. And it's like the, we've actually even closing off ourselves to the world have in some ways opened ourselves up even more to so many more voices and so many more opinions coming in. And so I think this series is so vital for us because it's so important for us to calibrate and for us to say that right now, the most important voice that I wanna hear is what does my Father in heaven speak over me? And we need to, get, need to get back to the basics of understanding my identity in Christ is the foundation upon which I stand like nothing else. And so we've talked about this idea of identity in Christ and I want us to take one more step further in seeking to understand what that is. And I'm gonna give you an example of how we can understand identity in Christ and that example is gonna start in Mark chapter one, verse nine. It's on the screen and this is one of the first things that Jesus ever did in ministry on this earth. It says, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn apart and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. So we're trying to understand what does it mean for our identity in Christ, and we need to start first off with understanding this is the relationship between God the Father and Jesus. 
And this story of baptism, man, it is so important for our understanding of Jesus. There's a lot going on here. The beginning of Jesus's ministry, his empowerment by the Holy Spirit, even Jesus identifying himself with a lot of passages in the Old Testament and their significance there. And so we could talk a lot about the spiritual significance of this baptism. But what we really need to understand, at least for tonight, is honing in on that last phrase, God saying to Jesus, you are my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. So God the Father bestowed an identity on Jesus Christ, fully God, but also fully man. And he spoke to him and said, before you ever did any ministry, before you ever healed anyone, taught a parable, died on the cross, you are still my beloved son, and I am well pleased with you. Now, now you may say, Brian, yeah, like, if I was God, like, I'd be pretty pleased with Jesus too, okay? Okay. Like, he's perfect, he's never done anything wrong, he obeyed every command, like, yeah, it would be pretty easy to be pleased with Jesus, but even though I'm a son or I'm a daughter of God, I, I've made a lot of mistakes, it's actually a lot harder for me to understand and think that God could be pleased with me. And I get that because I felt that. But I wanna take you to one more passage, John chapter 17. This is Jesus praying a prayer before he goes to the cross. And in this prayer, he prays that the world may know that you sent me, and listen to this part, loved them even as you loved me. So he's praying that we as followers of him would understand and know that God loves us the exact same way that he loved Jesus. This is where in Christ comes in. Because if we are united with Christ, if we are clothed in Christ and wrapped in the identity in Jesus, then we must understand that the spiritual blessings that God bestows upon Jesus are the same spiritual blessings that he bestows upon us. So because Jesus was a beloved son, we are beloved sons. Because God was well pleased with Jesus, he is well pleased with us. Not because of what we have done, not because of our failures left or right, but because we are in Christ. And because our identity is received in Christ, God loves us and he is well pleased with us. You know, in ancient times, oftentimes uh, big households, you know, rich men and rich women, they would employ these bond servants. And these servants would actually be men and women who would kind of take care of the house. They were like the butlers and the, the maids of the day kind of a thing. And they oversaw the house and oftentimes, these servants that were at the time of Jesus, they had great responsibility. They had great high, um, high honor within the house. And sometimes even, you know, when the, the, the man or woman who, who, who owned the house, like they, they died, they might even leave something to the, 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 the servant. But, but what Paul, when he says that you and I, we are adopted as sons and daughters, what he's saying is that God has transferred our identity so we're not simply just a servant anymore, but he has adopted us into the family. And so when you're adopted into the family, we have friends right now, Katie and I do, and they're part of our Harbor community who are about to adopt someone into their family. And when they adopt them into their family, they are gonna get every single benefit that comes with being in that family. And because of Jesus in Christ, you and I are adopted into the family of God and we are clothed and wrapped in Jesus so that we have the same love and the same acceptance that Jesus has. This is the spiritual blessing that we are given in Christ. And so maybe... You know, for you and I, it may be hard to understand that. It may be hard to receive that. And maybe you're even saying, Brian, that sounds really cool, but, but I don't understand. Like, how can I actually walk that out? 
Well, it says in Colossians chapter one, or excuse me, chapter three, it says, if you have been raised with Christ, which we've just learned, we have been, we have every spiritual blessing, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are on this earth. Set your mind on them. And so, but a long time, honestly, when I read that verse, I kind of just breezed past it. And I kind of just thought, you know what that means? That means just think about like happy thoughts, think about positive vibes, don't really spend a lot of time, you know, like thinking about negative stuff. But, but what I realized as, as I begin to study this in the context of in Christ is, is what we are called to do is we are called to understand that God in heaven, there is a spiritual reality in heaven that is actually a real thing and that you and I need to understand and set our minds on that reality and actually start to believe that reality, even though it must be through faith, we must believe that reality and set our minds on that reality even more than the voices and the circumstances and the experience that we see on this earth. And so often we flip it. So often we know the reality that Jesus has for us, but we believe the reality of the experiences and the voices that we see, but we gotta flip it. We gotta understand that we are going to have circumstances and experiences in our lives that are negative. We are gonna have voices that guide and direct, but we say, I am not going to set my mind on earthly things, but I'm gonna force and say, I'm gonna set my mind on the kingdom of God and be locked into the reality of his kingdom. And over the next three weeks, I'm gonna say the same kind of closing point because I think it's that important. And this is how we set our minds on the things above. First, we read it. Second, we pray it. And third, we speak it. And each week, I'm gonna kind of take us through one part of this, but first, I wanna say that we read it. We must set our minds by reading the word of God. And I'm gonna challenge you this week for everyone listening to the sound of my voice, and we're gonna sing here in a second, and that's another way that we're gonna set our minds, but for everyone listening to the sound of my voice, I'm gonna challenge you to read Ephesians chapter one, verses 17 through 19, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, every day this week. And as you read it, I want you to just pray that over your life. Speak it out, pray it over your life, and ask that God would, would help you to understand the words that are spoken and pray it over your family, pray it over your friends as well. God, we thank you for your word. Thank you that for everyone in, in, in the sound of my voice who is a follower of Jesus, that we are in Christ, that we have every spiritual blessing because of that, that we are beloved sons and daughters. Help us to set our minds on those things and to receive those things into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thanks so much for tuning into the harbor tonight. I just have a couple of things I wanted to share with you by way of announcement. Uh, first and foremost, as we've been saying every week, stay tuned into our Instagram at We Are The Harbor. If you're not following, go ahead and follow that. Uh, secondly, man, really hoping that we're gonna have um, some news with you next week at the Harbor to share as far as our reopening plan. Um, the church, Calvary Chapel, uh, we have announced that we are reopening on uh, Father's Day weekend, uh, June 20th through the 21st. There's a bunch of details there on our website. And so we are working really hard and trying to figure out um, the best time to reopen. And we're really hoping to be able to communicate that to you next week at the Harbor Online. If we don't, don't be mad at me, but we're gonna try our best. And then uh, last but not least, I wanna remind you to uh, head over right now to the Harbor Instagram uh, Live at We Are The Harbor. Uh, head over there. Uh, Tara's gonna be there. She's gonna be having an amazing conversation and it's been such a fun time connecting with you. Uh, last thing, I know I said the last thing was last, but hey, I get to say whatever I want. I have the microphone. Um, I wanna encourage you, man, if this message encouraged you and blessed you to share it with someone that needs it. Take a moment to post it or share it on Instagram or send a text to somebody with the link because I know that there's a lot of people who need to be encouraged in these days. We love you so much. Can't wait to see your beautiful faces. But until then, head to Harbor Instagram Live right now. Flame for